For this video, I want to go over what I believe is the best filter media to help maintain safe and stable water parameters in your aquarium. I've tried several popular filter media options in different aquarium setups, but I always return to 30 ppi foam. Essentially, it's a block of foam with 30 pores per inch, also known as ppi. In my experience, this is perfect as it's not as fine as 40 ppi foam that can clog very quickly, but it's not as coarse as 20 ppi foam that has less surface area with the 30 ppi hitting the sweet spot. On top of this, it's cheap, easy to find, easy to clean, and offers a lot of customization. And most importantly, it offers plenty of surface area for beneficial microorganisms to colonize to manage water parameters. This lets the colonies help process the toxic ammonia into toxic nitrite and then into nitrate, keeping your fish, shrimp, snails, and plants as safe as possible while in your care. Now I do want to quickly touch on mechanical, biological and chemical filtration to help explain where 30 ppi fits into the overall filtration process. Mechanical filtration is typically the first step in aquarium filters and its main job is to trap the tiny particles that cloud the water and help keep your tank looking clear. Most people agree that filter floss is the best option for this purpose and I place it in the filter before my 30 ppi foam and then I replace it independently as it gets clogged. Biological filtration is the second step where beneficial microorganisms grow on the filter media and then it converts the toxic ammonia into toxic nitrite and then into less toxic nitrate. This is where the 30 ppi foam really shines and in my opinion it's a better option than the more expensive filter media types on the market. If you look at something like a sponge filter it is literally a solid block of foam that is used for both biological and mechanical filtration and it's one of the most popular filter types in the hobby proven that this concept can work very well. The final filtration step is chemical filtration and it is optional and I very rarely use it in my own aquariums. Depending on your needs you can use something like purigen or activated carbon or something more specific depending on the specific situation of your fish tank. The majority of my aquariums use filter floss for mechanical filtration followed by 30 ppi foam for the biological filtration without any chemical filtration in the system. So moving on and I'd like to go over why I feel that 30 ppi foam compares and often outperforms the other biological filtration media options in the aquarium hobby. One of the biggest advantages is the large amount of surface area it provides related to the space it actually occupies in your filter. According to the Swiss Tropicals website, 30 ppi porette foam offers an impressive surface area and they also share some figures for other popular options for comparison and you can see the 30 ppi foam is way in ahead of the rest. As I mentioned earlier, as the microorganism colonies in your fish tank start to grow, they'll start to occupy a lot of this surface area and be able to help process ammonia and nitrite in your tank. Another thing to keep in mind is that once filter gunk starts to build up in your filter, some media types become drastically less effective as the gunk fills all of the little crevices on the media, whereas 30 ppi foam can easily be squeezed out and cleaned. Now I want to be clear here, porette foam is just one example and it is one of the more expensive foam options for filters. I don't use it, I use the cheapest 30 ppi foam that I can use in my own aquariums. But unfortunately I can't find any official surface area figures for the other foam brands but I do suspect it'll be very similar to the porette foam. Another advantage of 30 ppi foam is that it is extremely easy to clean and I can usually complete the filter maintenance on one of my filters in less than a minute completely removing the media of gunk. Technically you can rinse the foam under some tap water if you wish, but I personally prefer to wash it in a bucket of old tank water during a water change. Not only does this remove the risk of the beneficial microorganisms on the foam being harmed by chlorine or chloramides in tap water, but it also makes sure that the water is the same temperature that the microbiome is used to, helping to keep everything safe and sound. Now just for anyone who's brand new I want to go over my cleaning process because it's very very simple. 
I literally remove my 30 ppi foam from the filter and give it a couple of squeezes in a bucket of old tank water and then I put it back into the filter. This eliminates the buildup of debris and filter gunk helping to prevent clogging while also maintaining as much of the surface area as possible for the microorganisms. If needed I will cut a new square of the filter floss and I'll put that in front of the 30 ppi foam in the filter but I usually do that step once every month or so. As I mentioned earlier, the solid media types such as ceramic and sintered glass can't be squeezed out, so although you can wash them, gunk impactation can build up over time and use up a lot of the tiny little pores on the media. How often you need to squeeze your 30 ppi foam out will depend on several factors such as the number of fish you keep, the actual type of fish you keep, how much and how often you feed them and your choice of hardscape and whether you keep live plants. I usually check my 30 ppi foam every week but I usually give them a squeeze every one to four weeks depending on the specific aquarium that I'm doing the maintenance for. So the next advantage of 30 ppi foam is its durability as it can be reused repeatedly which helps keep costs to a minimum. Many of the modern hang on back filters use the cartridge system with built in filter floss and once that floss becomes clogged the entire cartridge including your biological media needs to be replaced. However with 30 ppi foam you simply squeeze it clean when needed and then you can replace the filter floss with a new cut when it's clogged. As I mentioned earlier, solid media types can suffer from debris buildup, sometimes resulting in them being close to useless and needing to be replaced. Now you can buy waste eating bacteria in a bottle products to help clear the gunk in these solid media types, but that's extra cost to you that you can avoid by just using 30 ppi foam. Moving on and we get to my personal favourite benefit of 30 ppi foam and that is just how cheap it is compared to a lot of other filter media options. You can purchase a large sheet of this for far less than some of the competing media types and then simply cut it down to size as needed. Even when you factor in the additional cost of some filter floss which is roughly the same as a sheet of 30 ppi foam, most people will find that this works out far cheaper than the alternatives. If you only have one aquarium then the cost savings may not be that dramatic but many hobbyists including myself end up with multi-trank syndrome maintaining several aquariums at once so in this scenario the savings quickly add up. The final advantage of 30 ppi foam is just how customizable it actually is compared to some other popular media types. Being a foam block means that you can trim it down to size to fit almost any filter that you're able to find that'll work with your aquarium. Unlike rigid solid biological media types that have a fixed shape and size that can limit their usage, you can just bend and shape 30 ppi foam to your exact needs as well. I use it as my filter media of choice in my nano hang on back filters, my standard hang on back filters, my hang on canister filters and my large fluval FX2 canister filter. Although I don't use it in any of my tanks in a box filter, I have previously cut it down to size to put it into an air powered box filter as well so there is a lot of ways that you can use this in your fish room. Personally I'm really not a fan of internal filters but again you can cut some 30 ppi foam down to size and then use it as your media of choice inside the majority of internal filters too if needed. So moving on I'd like to briefly compare 30 ppi foam to some other popular filter media options to try and show why I personally believe it's the best option for most people. So I want to start with filter media cartridges because these are very very common in modern hang on back and internal canister filters. The majority of people universally agree that these are a very bad filter media option for most aquarium setups. This is largely because they are designed to generate ongoing sales for the manufacturer rather than offer you the best performance possible for your filter and aquarium. Now each brand does have its own approach but most do feature at least one layer of filter floss for mechanical filtration followed by some type of foam or carbon infused media. As I mentioned earlier with these once this filter floss gets clogged you have to replace the entire thing. The good news is that you can easily replace this entire cartridge with 30 ppi foam using the cartridge itself as a template to cut your foam down to size. 
As you can see here, the difference in surface area between a standard cartridge and a piece of 38 PPI form is massive and keep in mind there's only a tiny slice of form in the middle of this cartridge, the rest of it is either filter floss or just plastic. So after placing your custom cutout of the form into your cartridge slot in your internal or hang on back filter, you can insert a separate piece of filter floss into the intake compartment as needed for mechanical filtration. This completely removes the need for these cartridges as they are designed to be a single unit with all media types within it and once the mechanical filtration gets clogged, the entire cartridge needs to be replaced. Not only does this increase costs, but it can also remove a large portion of your beneficial microorganisms that help keep your water parameters safe and stable for your fish. By switching to 30 ppi form, you increase the amount of surface area available for biological filtration in your aquarium and it also lets you replace your filter floss independently as needed without disturbing the established microorganisms. Next up we have ceramic media and I've only ever used this once in one of my filters and it did hold the cycle without issue to be fair but they ended up getting clogged and they were a pain to clean compared to 30 ppi form. Most popular brands in the hobby do have some type of ceramic media on the market these days and they're all listed at different prices but I'm willing to guess that they all work out far more expensive than a sheet of 30 ppi form. Next up we get the sintered glass media such as bio gravel but there's a ton of different options on the market now. This type of filter media is somewhat controversial as they claim to be able to lower nitrate levels in the aquarium but to my knowledge there's no independent research confirming this. Personally I don't mind whether these reduce nitrates or not since I keep planted tanks and consider nitrate to be a plant food. In my experience, sintered glass media easily maintains the nitrogen cycle, ensuring safe and stable ammonia and nitrite levels for your fish to thrive. The main drawback of these sintered glass filter medias is their more expensive price tag where 30 ppi foam comes in far cheaper time and time and time again. Finally we get to see chem matrix and to my understanding this is currently one of the most popular biological filter medias on the market but it is very controversial in the hobby. Before I go any further I just want to quickly say that there's been claims of Seachem threatening legal action against content creators who go against their narrative so for legal reasons I will be careful with how I phrase this section. So the first reason that Seachem Matrix is very controversial is that a lot of people suspect that it's merely overpriced pumice stone backed by an excellent marketing team. Seachem have actually addressed this on their official Seachem Matrix sales page on their website but they don't outright deny that it is just pumice stone, they use marketing language to try and avoid giving a definitive answer to the question. Now I just want to do a quick price comparison on the off chance that this is literally just pumice stone. At the time of recording here in the United Kingdom I can currently buy 2 litres of sea kerricks on Amazon for £25.91. I can also buy 2 litres of Horizon Aquatic's own pumice media for £18.99 which is a, around a 27% reduction in price for something that to my eye looks identical. And then if you're willing to break down the larger pieces of pumice into small enough pieces to fit in your filter and correctly rinse it before use you can get 2.5 litres from Grow Tropical for £5.99 coming in at almost 77% cheaper than Seachem Matrix while also getting an extra half a litre. Here's some clips of the Horizon Aquatic's own pumice media and I know that some people will want this type of media in their filter because it's got such a strong marketing campaign behind it but if you are in the UK I'd highly recommend just going with the Horizon Aquatic's one. I tried to capture some close up footage during a recent trip down there and as you can see it looks so similar to Seachem Matrix and again for legal reasons I'm not going to say Matrix is definitely pumice stone but it looks so similar. But again in my opinion it's just so much cheaper to go with 30 ppi foam especially if you are looking at Seachem Matrix because of its massive price tag. The second point of controversy is that Seachem claim that Matrix is able to convert nitrate into nitrogen gas effectively passively removing it from your aquarium. 
Like I mentioned earlier, I personally don't really care about this because I keep planted tanks where nitrate is essential nutrients for my plants. However, if you are keeping tanks with goldfish, cichlids or some other type of plant-eating fish, that claim may be appealing to you. Now I do want to be as fair as possible to try and help as many people as possible and there is some independent peer-reviewed research out there that found that pumice stone can actually help remove up to 85.17% of nitrate in a tank. The issue is that in this research the pumice stone was used as a substrate at the bottom of the tank and it wasn't used as a filter media inside of a filter with oxygenated water constantly flowing through it. Now this distinction is important because it's widely believed that the bacteria that can convert nitrate into nitrogen gas generally require anoxic or even anaerobic conditions to thrive. The research paper does confirm that the substrate layer of their tank had anoxic conditions which means it has limited dissolved oxygen available for the bacteria at that layer of the tank which is highly difficult to replicate in a modern filter. This is why I personally doubt that Seachem Matrix or the sintered glass medias on the market can truly convert nitrate into nitrogen gas when used as a filter media. And that's also why I personally believe there's no publicly available research where either media type has been used inside of a filter and achieved this result. And in my opinion, I honestly do think that when it comes to dealing with nitrate levels, Seachem Matrix and 30 ppi form are probably on par with each other due to the amount of dissolved oxygen flowing through the average filter on a modern aquarium. Anyway guys, that brings the video to an end. I hope it's been helpful and that you've been able to get a better idea of how 30 ppi form can work as a filter media. As I mentioned earlier, it's basically the same concept as a cheap sponge filter which is one of, if not the most popular filter type in the hobby and it's proven time and time again that its form can hold the cycle on an aquarium. I just wanted to try and put this out and try and better explain the concept of using 30 ppi form in something like a hang on back or a canister filter to try and show you can use cheaper biological filtration options and you don't need the expensive stuff on the market. Out of all of my aquariums, the only one that currently doesn't use 30 ppi form is this setup which is currently cycling and that is literally because it uses an undergravel filter where the substrate is used as the filter media. Everything else I have in my filter room with a filter uses 30 ppi form for biological filtration and I never have issues with parameters.